Lee Bottom Flying Field is a historic flying field that's been around since the 30s. And it's located in a scenic Ohio River, River Bottom, about halfway between Louisville and Cincinnati. It's a little over 4,000 foot grass strip and it's public use, which is rare these days. So it's open to any pilot who wants to fly it. Peyton Autry was only 16 years old when he took two months to barnstorm the Ohio River Valley in southern Indiana in 1933. Marty does a couple of circles out over the river until he has climbed up to about 1,500 feet. Then he heads back over Madison, then gradually back over the little town of Hanover. And below I can see the high campus and buildings of beautiful Hanover College, which I remember visiting so well in both 1926 and 1928, now five years ago. Ahead and below I can see our field in the tourist camp cabins, and Marty is cutting back on the OX-5's RPM, and we are slowly losing altitude. At about 500 feet, we pass over the hill and on the south or far end of the field to swing north and get lined up for an approach and landing. We sit down gently in the hay stubble and begin the long taxi up to the first or southernmost of the cabins. We taxi nearly a quarter of a mile before we reach the southernmost cabin.
Lee Bottom Flying Field was originally owned when I found it by Fritz Hageman. He retired from the Air Force and then he retired from the airlines. And he had no family and he lived here. His dream was to own his own airport. So he found this place, bought it, moved from Miami, and improved it a little. It had been here since the 30s, but it really was nothing like you see today. And he spent a third of his amassed fortune, which was not that much, on uh, expanding the runway. And I started coming here in the mid-90s and helping him mow the grass. and just I would just sit on the picnic tables and talk to him. He was a fascinating man. He had been in World War II and Korea and Vietnam and in the airlines. We'd tell stories till 4 a.m. in the morning. As he got older, through my flying career, there was a trailer on the field. I moved on to the field as a deal with him that I would take care of the airport and I could live here for free. So he's kind of like, uh, everybody kind of knows him as my adopted grandfather. And so as time went on and I was taking care of him, taking him to town, taking him to the doctor, we kind of got this special relationship and right before he passed away, I made a deal to purchase the place. And the deal was, was that I had to keep it in the airport. So ever since, we've been expanding it and growing it and uh, just trying to keep it going as he wished. The interesting thing about fly-ins and cruise-ins are the interesting people you meet. And we met Ginger Gordon at the Flying Cruise-In in Marion. She suggested we come down and see what they do down here at Lee Bottom. And Ginger, we first appreciated the contribution you give to us at the Marion Flying Cruise-In. You flew in a, an old PT-26. Yeah, thank you, Ray. It was a wonderful time and a great event that you guys had. Thanks for hosting us. Well, uh, listen, uh, PT-26 is not an airplane you see fly very often, and then a lady pilot flying it. How did you get interested in flying, and then uh, bring us up to the point where you uh, began flying the PT-26? Well, uh, I started out in high school very interested in flying, and my parents, neither one of them fly. My dad's never even been in a plane until he says 30 years into his marriage and my mom saw an ad in the paper for a job to work at an air show at Mount Comfort Airport and that got me kind of my first taste of aviation and from there I flew in a T6 my first ever airplane ride we had the uh, canopy open slightly you know and you could you could feel the the breeze and the air and the smell the grass and I was hooked ever since <laughs> and uh, then uh, you got your private pilot's license Yes, I did, and uh, went in after that, and actually, we'll wait for the sound of the roar there. <laughs> um, after that, I worked at um, Eagle Creek Airport on the uh, west side of Indianapolis, and I was lucky that they let me uh, work on my instrument rating as part of my pay for working there. It was my fun job. Um, and then from there, I went and got my multi-engine. I got a glider rating and a commercial rating.
We're standing in front of your airplane. Uh, actually, when I picked it up, they got a big laugh out of it because I went and put fuel in it, checked that air in the tires, taxied out a little bit, and I took off. And everybody said they couldn't believe that, that I would do that. But it was a lot of fun. Well, uh, airplanes are really a little bit like cars, aren't they? Uh, in that, you know, once you got the principles, you can kind of feel your way around the different ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everybody says they have wings, they fly, which is which is true, and each one has a little nuance, and as long as you feel comfortable with it, you're okay. Well, it's a beautiful little airplane. What horsepower? It's 160 horsepower. And 160 horsepower and 170 mile an hour. Yeah, you got it. It zips me along. Well, it's pretty efficient. If uh, I think they usually say an airplane, if, it, if one mile per hour per horsepower, this even does better than that. Yeah, it does, and it, um, it's very economical to operate, too, about seven gallons per hour. And so I can get from my home in Greenwood down to Lee Bottom Airport in a little less than a half hour and three and a half gallons. And I understand you come down here once in a while. I come down here quite a bit. <laughs> What's your connection with Lee Bottom? Well, Rich Davison, the owner, is my boyfriend, and so he has me mowing grass quite frequently and um, helping put on the fly-in event, making lots of chili.
The wood fabric and tailwheels fly-in is mostly a antique and classic fly-in, as the name implies, wood, fabric, and tailwheels. So if you have any of these, that's your invitation. Some people think that they can't come in their 172s or whatever. Everybody's welcome. You know, some places you may go and they put the, the metal planes over here and the antiques here. Here, everybody's part of our family, and in fact, we call them the Lee Bottom family. So people who like just getting out and having fun and just meeting people, like-minded people, this is the place for that. We say it's the most nothing you'll ever do. Uh, there's really no schedule. All, the only thing that's planned is food, and that's around lunchtime. So people know they can come here, and it's a good old-fashioned fly-in. They fly in, they get here, they're welcome, they hang out, they meet new friends or old friends. They have lunch, they hang out, watch the planes fly, and then they go home. And that's it. Whatever order they want to do it, they do it. Emphasis is placed on everyone being welcome and just being relaxed. Yeah, it's great. Everybody comes in there, they say, this place is wonderful. Uh, they have no idea how much work it takes. It takes a full eight hours for me to mow just the grass. That's nothing else. But I tell you, it's worth it when uh, you have to pull the tractor off the runway for an old biplane to land or something. Well, I can imagine. And But, you know, uh, like you say, you're preserving this. It is a lot of work, but yeah. for the kind of flying that I like to do, and, and it, it's, it's getting harder for us. It really is. And... Uh, it's starting to get to the point where you feel like if you don't do it, who will? You know, it really does. Mm -hmm.